Hello everyone, Thomas here, Free Range Art Farm. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the electric bear fence that we just set up around our beehives to try and keep bears from, well, destroying our hives and eating our eating our bees' homes. So, um, let me just turn you around and show you what I've got. So I decided to go with just some six-foot T-posts that I buried about two feet into the ground. And I just made a big circle around our beehive area. So right now it's off. So this is a stranded electric wire. It looks like string, but there's a wire that goes through it. And then you can just kind of knot these together to make contact. And then I've got all these plastic standoffs uh, on each of the posts to keep this from making contact with the T-post. Because if this touches metal, it's gonna ground and that's gonna mess up the circuit. So I've got the bottom one at about eight inches and the rest of these sort of evenly spaced uh, above that all the way around. Over here is the controller solar powered box. Since we're a good ways, the house is up there. There's no power out here. So I'm using a solar box. I'm not sure I really have this facing the right direction now that I've started looking at it. Um, the th sun is out that way, and the solar panel is here. So I might need to put this on the other side of the T-post. Uh, not really sure. We'll see how it charges. We just set it up, and this thing says, don't turn this on until it's had three full days to charge. So we'll come back in a few days and actually test the circuit. So I got this for about $120. I think the T-posts were, I don't know, $4 a piece. I have... 15 or so of them in the ground here. The plastic standoffs were just a few dollars. I've got this copper grounding rod, which is supposed to be all the way down in the ground. It's a six foot rod. I got it about four feet into the ground and then I hit something, large rock or something, and it could not go any farther. So that's where it is. I might cut it off at the ground level, but I might just leave it the way it is. So I've got this wire coming up to the ground here and I've got the fence coming down here and over and just tying in to this line here and then I've got a line that goes all the way top to bottom to tie every single row together so they should all get juice off of this line and then all the way up and then these are uh, my gate, essentially. So, when I come out here to do stuff, I will just shut this panel off, and then I'll just disconnect these guys here, just like that, and then do a couple of three of them all the way down, and then I can get easily in and out of my apiary and tend to my bees. So that's about it. I think the whole thing costs certainly less than $200. And that's about the, the basics of a, an electric fence. Just stake off a bunch of perimeter stakes, the T-posts, and then I got those plastic standoffs. Of course, you can do this with any number of different uh, kinds of posts. And if you have plastic posts, you don't need the standoffs because there's no ground contact with metal. Uh, but this is the route I chose. I wanted something a little bit more sturdy. It gets fairly windy out here, and I wanted them to be uh, going to the ground a couple of feet. Um, so that's why I chose those. And then uh, the electric cable, a couple of things to get in for a gate so I can get in and out. And the solar power, the controller, is just right here so I can shut it off from outside the gate. Hopefully bears don't figure that out. Uh, hopefully bears don't ever come by. Uh, but if they do, they should get a good zap. Uh, this is supposed to put out, I think, 7,000 volts. Uh, so I've got a tester, which maybe I'll wait to finish this video for three days. I think I'm going to. Uh, so you guys have to wait about a millisecond. Uh, maybe I'll just warp you. I think I can just warp us forward in time. So, and... Oh! Wow, that was quick. Uh, so here we are. It's uh, five days later. Um, so that was a good jump in time. I overshot by a couple days, uh, but it was raining, so yeah, it's fine. Uh, so today we're going to check and see if this is... <laughs>
All right, let's uh, let's try that again. Today is about four days of this charger getting charged in the sun, so I think we'll peel off our little sticker here and turn this on. Oh, there we go. Should not have done that live. We'll turn this on and try not to shock ourselves. I can hear noises. All right, I think that's not lit. All right, so let's hook up the tester and see if we have anything. Well, my handy dandy voltage tester thing that I bought, uh, this little guy, he's not showing anything. Um, maybe I need a tester for the tester. I went ahead and did this old school and just sort of touched the wire. I'm fairly insulated from the ground with my, uh, you know, my thick-soled shoes, or boots, rather. Uh, so I'm fairly insulated from the ground with my boots on. Uh, so I touched all different lines, and I got a little bit of a zap. Um, I touched them with the back of my hand, uh, because if you touch them with the front of your hand, sometimes when you get an electrical shock, your hands are going to close, and then you're going to grab onto the wire and even be worse. So you touch it with the back of your hand, then your hand's gonna back away from the shock. So let me show you my stupidity uh, and getting myself shocked, hang on. So I'm just kinda, oh, there we go. <laughs> and we'll try this one. Oh, yep, that's a good one. This one, yep. Wait, oh, yep, there it goes. Oh, yeah, that one got me too. <laughs> All right, so there you go, Stupidity in Action 101. Welcome to Free Range Art Farm. Thanks for stopping in and checking out how I uh, made my electrical fence. Oh, one other uh, point of note. This is a field and the grass gets fairly tall. So I need to make sure that I keep it all trimmed really low around that bottom wire uh, because that uh, grass could actually ground out the circuit as well. Uh, my edger ran out before I risked my life and tried edging in front of the bees and they are super active today. It's not quite 55, almost 60 degrees out right now. A little bit of a breeze, but uh, they're moving. So happy bees, at least the yellow hive, that's our thriving hive. Purple hive is, there's some activity, um, but there weren't a lot of babies in there to begin with. Well, after we had to fix them. Thanks for stopping in and uh, taking a look at the video. Uh, so let's see, I gotta get it right. My wife keeps adding things. Be happy, be good, believe, which I kinda think that one's a little silly. She's pushing it. Uh, and uh, hope you uh, guys hang around for the next videos.